Hello, welcome to the shop. This video kicks off a three-part series where we make the same marquetry design using three different techniques. First, we'll jump right into the deep end and go for the laser, specifically a glow forge. The second time around, we'll cut the double bevel technique on the scroll saw, and the third one, we'll do the painting in wood style on the Chevrolet. Here's the design we'll be using. It's a straightforward design, and the files are available below if you want to follow along. Let's get started. I start by figuring out the grain direction of each piece and drawing that on the diagram. I'm going to add shading with hot sand, so I'll sketch the shaded areas on each piece, imagining a light source coming from the top left. And here's the drawing with the grain lines and shading added. I'm using three veneers for this, curly oak for the background, maple for the flowers, and an unknown species of brown colored wood for the stem and leaves. I'll just get this cut to size to fit into the laser. It's important that the pieces remain flat, so I'll use magnets to hold them down to the crumb tray. This will prevent them from curling and being cut, and from being blown by the air assist fan. Whoops. Before we cut, let's head over to the computer and take a look at the setup. I use Adobe Illustrator for my designs. You can use Inkscape, Corel Draw, or any other vector program. So here I've got the flower drawing where each piece is a closed shape and there's a shape for the background with a cut for the flower pieces to fit into. When a laser cuts, it removes material and we need to account for that material or we'll end up with gaps between our pieces. This is called kerf. We can deal with kerf by expanding each piece by the same amount. The actual kerf will differ depending on the laser and the material. For this laser and these veneers, I found a value of two thousandths of an inch to work pretty well. We also need to account for kerf in acute corners. If the corners don't have a radius that at least matches the kerf, the pieces won't fit together. And finally, the laser's kerf is a little bit wider at the top of the cut than it is at the bottom. To deal with this, we'll reflect the pieces and cut everything out as though they were backwards. I also made this piece cutting everything out normally, and I'll show you the difference at the end of the video. You can do each of these things manually in whatever program you're using, but I like to use a plugin for Illustrator called Image Paint. It'll handle everything curve related with a single click. You can also scan in each piece of veneer and place each piece of the design onto the veneers, and it'll show you what the final piece will look like. It'll also track which pieces have been cut and where they've been cut. That feature is a little overkill for this design, so I'll just use the curve related functions. In the laser panel, I'll enter two thousandths of an inch for the kerf and make sure smart profiling is selected. Then I can generate the cutting paths. Once the cutting paths are generated, I can export them to SVG, which is what the Glowforge uses. To cut the pocket that all the pieces fit into, I'll follow the same steps, but select Smart Pocketing. I've exported two different files here, but everything can fit into the laser at once, so I'm going to combine them into a single SVG file. For the pocketing operation, Image Paint will create a shape that gets engraved and three outline passes to clean it up. This is what you would want to use if you were inlaying the flower into a piece of solid wood, but we're just going to use the outside outline to cut a hole into another piece of veneer for the flower to fit into.
Now I'll just sort the shapes into groups according to the pieces of veneer that they'll go on. Image paint does not reflect the pocketing outline, so I'll reflect that here. I forgot to export the outline of the final piece, so I'll add that here. With the pieces uploaded to the Glow4G UI, I can lay them out on their respective sheets of veneer. These sheets of veneer are from an earlier piece I made trying to use Purple Heart for the flower petals, but that didn't turn out very well. The Purple Heart gets a little muddy. As far as settings go, I'm using a speed of 225 and a power of 50. I'm arranging each piece according to the wood grain direction I drew out earlier. And now we're ready to cut. Once the laser is finished, I'll carefully gather up each piece. If a piece breaks while you're removing it, don't worry about it too much. Once everything is assembled and glued up, you won't even notice the break. A scalpel or an X-Acto knife with a fresh blade makes it easy to pick up the individual pieces. Back at the bench, I'll sort the pieces and lay them out roughly how they'll be assembled. Notice the reference printout is a reversed image. This is a little easier than trying to imagine each piece backwards. For sand shading, I've got some sand in a pan on a hot plate as high as it'll go. Just keep dipping the piece in and letting it sit there for a while until your preferred degree of doneness. To assemble the piece, I'll cover the show face with masking tape and build it from the reverse side. This is SureTape CP28. It's a lower tack painter's tape that can go through the clamps or the vacuum bag and still be easy to remove without pulling up wood fibers. I'll start building the piece generally from the outside working in. A seam roller can help press things into place. At this point, my microphone's batteries died, so instead of leaving dead silence, I'll play some music, which everybody loves and nobody ever complains about.
Sand shading can dry out the pieces and cause them to shrink a little bit. So here I'm lightly moistening the piece with a damp paper towel and putting it under the cutting mat with some weight. Usually you'd want to do this before you assemble the piece, but I forgot. I'll keep the glue up simple here and just use some regular wood glue, a piece of plywood, and some clamps. Normally I'd probably use a urea resin glue and a vacuum bag, but I want to keep this accessible. Once the piece is laid into the glue, you want to get the clamping pressure applied as soon as possible because the veneer will curl from the moisture in the glue. Some folded up newsprint will not only prevent the call from gluing to the piece, but it'll also help take up any differences in the thicknesses of the veneers. The tape should peel off without any problems, but you'll still want to be careful to avoid pulling out any wood fibers. Some veneers can be pretty fragile. And here's the piece right out of the press. Now I'll just sand it up to around 220 and it's ready for some finish. Ordinarily I'd use shellac here, but I've got this true oil to use up, so I'll put on a few coats of that instead.
and that's it. So you can hang this on the wall just as it is. You can make a frame for it or make a little stand for it. So earlier I noted I glued one up without flipping the pieces over to show you what the kerf looks like on the top side of the cut. So let's take a look at that. So this is one we made where we cut from the back side. And this is the one where we cut from the front side. And what you'll notice is the kerf is a little more pronounced, particularly down in here. Now that's not necessarily a bad thing. Um, you could work that into kind of the style of the piece, but that is the difference it makes. That's it for this one. Thanks for watching.